So I made a poll asking you guys what game you want me to optimize next and you guys voted for... Far Cry! Even though Far Cry 3 came out way back in 2012, it can be a very demanding game on some computers even nowadays. So in this video, we're gonna transform Far Cry 3 into Far Cry 0.5. So forget about distant objects being rendered properly, grass and um, your eyesight, because we're gonna make Far Cry 3 run on a toaster. The PC that I've decided to use for the video is my good old Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY laptop, which has the wonderful Intel Celeron N2840 and Intel HD graphics page rail. Also I'm using Windows 7 just because... I first run the game using the lovely low settings of course, in DirectX 9 mode, as well as the 800x600 resolution, which is the lowest one allowed by default. And the performance was… well, not really that great, with the little Celeron and measly Intel HD graphics combo fighting for those 15 FPS and failing to reach even that most of the time. It feels even worse during combat. I mean, my aiming is far from perfect, let's be real, but it's even more terrible when the game is running at below 15 FPS. So yeah, let's get to work. The configuration file for Far Cry 3 is located in the documents folder My Games Far Cry 3. The gamerprofile.xml file is the config file, which you can open with Notepad. In it, we've got quite a few stuff we can lower or disable altogether. In the topmost render profile line, we can set the SSAO level to 0 and we can also disable the async shader loading which can improve the performance on some old GPUs. In this line just down below, we can set the portal quality values to off, the post effects quality to false instead of off, as well as the ambient and the third ambient quality values to off once again, the HDR and reflection HDR values to zero, and the enable vertex binding value to zero again, to disable a bunch of unnecessary effects from the game. Finally, we can set the fire config, Wheel tree profile and the physics config values to low and don't bother setting them to off or false because nothing changes, trust me I've tested it. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. Setting the vegetation quality value to off disables the grass, yeah all that nice looking grass, well it's all gone now. Even more interesting is the depth past quality value, now you can just set it to low without much difference to the graphics. Setting it to off however, and things get quite strange. What this seems to do is it makes rocks and other certain objects and props appear blue-white-ish in the distance. It's not game breaking at all, it just looks rather weird. So if you think this is too much of a sacrifice, you might want to set that value to low instead. Fun fact, you can also disable the shadows, however there is a little problem. Did I ever tell you the definition of epilepsy? And now let's talk about custom resolutions. This resolution X and Y values at the top control the resolution of the game. You can use a lower resolution than the lowest default one, such as 640x400 or even 320x240 if you're really desperate, although the lowest one you should be using if you want the interface to be readable is 512x384. However, you can also use resolutions that your monitor doesn't support. This is quite useful for playing in a 16x9 resolution without the need to create custom resolutions in your GPU's control panel, or maybe not. Almost every single custom 16x9 resolution that I tried, whether it be 960x540, 640x360 or 512x288, had problems with part of the radar HUD being covered and the aspect ratio, well, not actually being 16x9. One resolution that did work without any issues though is 768x432. It's a pretty nice widescreen resolution and is similar to 640x480 in terms of pixel count.
Of course, if you guys don't want to modify the config file yourselves, I made a low-end config mod, which you can download from the link in the video description. I included configs with the dev pass quality value set to both low or off. I already showed what happens when you set the dev pass quality value to off, although I will mention that if you decide to use one of the configs with the dev pass quality set to low, there will be motion blur for some reason. I tried doing further modification to the configs to get rid of it, but um, nothing worked. Sorry guys. Anyway, to use the mod, first go to the config file folder of the game. Then, in the mod, open one of the two folders depending on whether you've chosen to play with the dev pass quality set to low or off. Then choose what resolution you want to use and open one of the folders depending on your choice. Finally, just drag and drop the config you chose from the mod into the game's config folder and replace the original file, although I will recommend making a backup in case you want to revert back to the default low settings later. There is also the ultra low configuration mod that I want to take a look at, which also disables several effects and is available on both ModDB and Nexus mods, and I will share the links for the mod from both websites. Before installing this mod, First, go to your Far Cry 3 game folder, then open the data winter 2 folder and check if you have the patch.dat and patch.fat files. If you don't have these two files, then you need to update the game to at least patch 1.01. .01. You might also need to back up both files in case you want to revert the changes later of course. Installing the mod is easy peasy. Just drag and drop the patch files from the mod into the data win to folder and replace the original files. And with the low end config with the dev pass quality value set to off and the ultra low configuration mode and the resolution of 640x400, we're now getting 20 to 25 FPS most of the time, with some drops to the high teens in more demanding areas or when there is a lot going on, and mid teens in the worst case scenarios, which I say is pretty good, considering that we're working with a little Celeron that struggles to handle 720p YouTube and also considering how demanding Far Cry 3 can be on many low-end PCs. By the way, when looking at the sky, we can get, um, 35 FPS? I expected more than this, to be honest. At least I can properly aim now. Okay, maybe not. But yeah, as I was saying guys, the game is quite playable now, considering what we're working with. If I only had the Celeron to play Far Cry 3 on, I could have fun playing like this, despite the game looking worse than Far Cry 1. Overall, I consider this a massive success, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching me run Far Cry 3 on an absolute potato, hopefully your potato too can run this masterpiece after watching this video, but that's not all, you can also check out the featured video where I run GTA 4 well on the same laptop in this video, or you can check out any of my other Luckfix videos featured in the playlist. Otherwise, it's been my pleasure, stay strong and I wish you all the best!